And we're back, Mike Cernovich, Danger and Play and Grill Mindset. Some of you have asked me to leave notes about these lists. Probably won't do it. Some of these videos, I'll do a longer article on it, Danger and Play. This will be one such video. So how can you reclaim your masculinity? Good question. Real good question. We'll do 10 ways that you can do it. But let's look at the root, root causes, the fundamental causes. There's a death of what you would call sort of male heroism. You appreciate this more when you travel to older lands like um, Hungary or even parts of France. There's all these monuments of men doing heroic things, men doing cool things, you know, men on horses, men with swords. There's eagles. There's very sort of strong figures. Those mon you couldn't build stuff like that today, right? Monuments like that wouldn't be built today. They would be, um, they'd be too offensive. They'd be too triggering. They would be too oppressive. They would be too patriarchal. So right now, men don't really have a sense of heroism. There's no sense of, I need to go out and I need to do something. And this is still in your instinct, but it's not chill in a productive way. And that's why Fight Club really was such a good book. The whole concept, just go start a fight. And there's the part of the book where they're going and they're trying to start fights and people people won't fight. It's really hard, actually, to um, to get a fight going on. If you went out to, in, to somebody on the street, you know, nine out of ten times, the guy is just going to completely punk out, completely back out in the U.S. Now, where I was in uh, Budapest, that would be a place where you probably wouldn't want to go start a fight wouldn't be a good idea and you can you can kind of tell there's a certain sort of violence beneath the veil there's that the face of the civilized male but if you know what to look for you look beneath that a little bit and you realize okay this isn't the kind of person i want to hit but that's a little bit more in eastern europe and western europe and in the u.s everybody's feminized like i said like that story I told you about yesterday you know i fucking had to lay out some kid I mean, when I was a kid, he's probably 25 or 26, but he just thought he was going to come shit-talk me, you know, because you can go shit-talk people. You can go to any bar tonight, fuck you, fuck you, you fucking faggot, fuck you, talk shit, oh yeah, yeah, what, 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 and nobody will ever actually fight. Well, it shouldn't be that way. If you get in somebody's face, you should know you're going to get knocked the fuck out, or you better, you better make your move, right? But we don't, that ma we've been completely castrated in that regard. There's no sense of male heroism or no sense of masculinity or just winning, right? There's not even a concept of winning anymore. That There was a story about the football player who got in drama because his kids got participation medals and he threw them away. He said, I don't want my two boys to grow up thinking showing up is enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, the media has been a little careful because he's a black man. And under the rules of social justice journalism, and I'm going to write about this later, you got to be careful what you say about black men, right? So the media has, it's called punching up. Me, you can say whatever you want about me. You can even lie about me, and it's okay. But if a black man tells his kids, hey, I'm going to raise you to be men, well, the, the feminists and the social justice warriors don't like that because it's patriarchal. But since there's that racial component, you know, it's, you know they got to be real careful. But prop, props to him, whoever it was. Uh, I don't. I think he's a football player. I don't know. I just saw it. But that's true. The idea of winning now. That's a very masculine trait, right? I want to win. People think you're crazy now. Well, there's no such thing as winners and losers. They think you're nuts. So how would you want to win? You know, I want to. Um, and I'm going to post this at uh, Danger and Play. But I want you to watch George Patton's speech to the Third Army, as depicted by I think George. See, Scott was the actor. Now imagine if, I'm going to break eye contact because I'm looking at the speech, but imagine if this kind of stuff were said today. Men, all this stuff you hear about America not wanting to win, wanting to stay out of the war, is a lot of bullshit. Americans love to fight. All real Americans love the sting and the clash of battle. Crazy, right? Americans play to win all the time. That's why Americans have never lost and will never lose a war. Well, we've come a long way since World War II, and we've come a long way from patent. The very thought of losing is hateful to Americans. Is it that way anymore? you got to wonder, right? It is, but it isn't. So right now there's this 
contradiction between real Americans and what the media wants real Americans to be. So why is Donald Trump so popular? People said, Mike, he can't win an election because I'm sort of, like, I'm plugged in both ways. So I am proudly, you know, fucking call me white trash, redneck. I grew up fishing, hunting, chewing tobacco, went to country music concerts, you know, fuck it. You know, I'm educated now, educated now, got a little money, but I'm still fucking white trash. I'm still, I know what these people think about me, but because I'm, you know, pretty smart or whatever, kind of hard to ignore. So I, so I can kind of go in between worlds. You know, I could go in back with the rednecks and I could just sit around and just shoot the shit. I would know what to say and what not to say. Now, if you're with rednecks, you don't fucking shit talk America, right? You, shit talk in America, that's for the learning class. That's for the people who love book learning. If you went to a bunch of rednecks and we're just all sitting around, we're chewing tobacco or something, and you said you think America is shit, there's going to be a problem and you might get your ass kicked. But if you go to these you know, coastal cities, fuck America, fucking America is shit and American people are shit, be like, yeah, cheer, cheers to you, buddy. So I know I, I, I go both classes, so I always kind of get into it with my elite, you know, right-wing friends, like, well, Trump has no choice. I'm like, yeah, he does, because I'm more of a real American than you are. And I don't quite phrase it that way. But real Americans want somebody to just say, no, no, fuck you, no. I'm not going to apologize for my tweets. I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I'm not going to apologize for being a man. No. And, and I saw that on a smaller scale because back when Gawker and Newsweek and Boing Boing and fucking too many too many people account shamed me because of my mean tweets. You know, everybody thought I was going to do a Mark Cuban, right? Alpha male Mark Cuban. You know, he, he posted a little tweet about, you know, hey, if you're a black kid like Trayvon, you walk around in a hoodie, people are going to look at you weird, you know? Well, that's true. Is it right? Well, that's a different question. But that's what I tell the black teenager play guys. I tell you, like, you know, I know you're good guys, but you wear a hoodie you're going to be judged differently than if I do. Now, we can debate whether that's true or false, or we can debate whether that's right or wrong, but that's morals. That isn't true or false. But Cuban, Mark Cuban, billionaire alpha male, boy, he had to apologize like a little bitch. Uh oh, you know, everybody thought I would. It's like, no. I wrote this fucking long thing saying, fuck you, I've never said anything worse than what Gawker said. And then I sort of spun it as, well, I'll try not to be like Gawker anymore. So then all these people came in, thought they were going to hate me and they were going to shame me. I was like, no. You know, and even my own guys thought I was going to go soft. I'd give Mike some moral support, you know, because that's what everybody's used to. Well, uh, okay. No, nah, fuck you. I'll never apologize. Fuck you. You know, kill me. Especially for tweets. I mean, if I really did something wrong, I'd probably make it right. But, yeah, fuck you, you know. So I told people, I said, if, if somebody in the Republican Party did what I did, and, my, of course, my analytics are just shooting up, right? Every day, shooting up. And I said, if somebody in the Republican Party did what I did, they would become president. People are like, uh, you know, Mike, crazy, right? Well, Trump is just doing what I'm doing. He said, fuck you, fuck the establishment. I believe in America. Hear my beliefs. When he was co confronted about mean tweets, he said, this is why America is losing, right? That's a deep theme with real Americans. And, and uh, America used to be a masculine country. That's why America's losing. Real Americans don't want to hear that. The, um, the people who run, you know, BuzzFeed, Gawker, uh, Vox, the Washington Post, the New York Times, they want America to lose. They hate America. The National Review, the conservatives, they're all conservatives. They hate America. They want America to lose. But real Americans, we don't want America to lose. The only reason we're mad at America is because we're, the, we're dying off because we're real Americans and these other people aren't real Americans. And we're fucking sick of them. You know, because I even used to do some America bashing, but I'm not bashing America. It's the fucking, the people, the conservatives, the social justice warriors, the feminists, because they're not real Americans. They don't believe in America. They hate America. So fuck them. You know, you realize who the real enemy is. So I hate them. But yeah, Patton, Patton couldn't say this. And I'll, and I'll read the whole, well, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll link to it and watch George C. Scott perform it. He talks about, don't be a pussy doesn't matter, don't quit, keep pushing forward, we don't like to lose, kill the motherfuckers, and so politically politically incorrect. He says, kill the German bastards, fucking cut their guts out. 
make them cry. You can't say stuff like that anymore. You're, you're terrible. There was even a story in, um, oh, I think tennis. I can't remember. I think in the UK. But I don't, see, I don't really follow the news. I just kind of see what you guys are, are tweeting out now. Look, so I don't know these people. But it was tennis, and two men were playing, and one man who was undermatched, or he was overmatched, rather, said to his competitor, yeah, you know, I uh, hate to tell you, mate, but, you know, my boy fucked your girl. Well, that, that guy lost. The guy, because he got so rattled. What? Instead of focusing on the game. And then the the tennis player said, I got fined like $10,000 or something. Men can't even shit talk, right? Because some pussy fucking man, uh, 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 the, uh, play the fucking game, right? It's a mind game. You can't, you can't say shit like that anymore. So that's why. That's the broader twin trend. So let's take let's do a, a quick ten quick ten. Be a little bit more specific. One is just say no to everything. You know, as a man you tend to get loaded down like a pack mule. Say no to everyone to say yes to yourself. And then reclaim your balance. You'll you'll find the right place. I don't say no to everything. But when I'm really putting work into myself and taking my life or my, my writing or something to the next level, I'm just like, no, people you do this? No. Do this? No. People are like, Mike, when you come back to the U.S., no, come visit me. I'll go, you know, you can come stay with me. I have a room. No, not, not going to do it. If you're in a relationship, take a trip by yourself or make her take a trip by herself. There's this idea that if you're, you're with someone, you know, you can never be apart. You got to be alone as a man. You got to be alone. And if you're afraid, well, what, what's she going to do? Well, that's a bigger problem. The next one is you got to create something. The need to create is a human impulse. Women, they create life. Men, you don't, you know, you don't create life in the way a woman does. See, but you want to create something. Create a business, create art, create architecture, create your own body, create your own future. Create something. You have to or you're going to go crazy. Uh, the next one is take a long hike into your ancestral environment. So Jews do this thing called the birthright trip. And what they do is they pay for people under 25 who are Jews to fly to Israel. It's a birthright trip. Now, isn't that kind of funny? You know, can anybody else do that, right? What if I said, okay, we're we're gonna take, send you know white people to England for a birthright trip? Can't really do that, right? Well, well, why is that? That's interesting, isn't it? Now, I believe in birthright trips. I believe in nationalism, and I believe that we all have deep roots, and then when you connect to your ancestral home, it does something in you. It awakens something in you. So if you're Indian, go to India and fucking do something very culturally Indian. If you're Native American, uh, hopefully you're still in, in touch with your people. You're, go, go to your ancestral homelands and become in touch with nature and your environment. And that will awaken something inside of you. It will, it will stir something in you. Next one, solitude every day. I linked to that article, Solitude and Leadership. I read that article probably twice a year. Uh, five minutes is good. Five hours is better. But you've got to be by yourself reflecting on life every day. Next one, lift weights. As a man in masculinity, you got to have some kind of muscle, some kind of fitness. You have to be prepared. As always, if the shit hits the fan, what are you going to do? Right? To be a man is to be a warrior. Even if you don't you know, want to go out and kill people, which I don't, what happens? Can you defend yourself? Can you take care of your family? You got to lift weights. You got to have some muscle. It's just it's not it's not debatable. If you're not going in the gym, then nothing else is going to be right. You have to lift weights, even if you're fat, even if you're skinny, doesn't matter. Lift weights. Plus, it'll do great things for your body and improve your health. Next one is shoot guns. Uh, again, <laughs> the noble class is always the warrior class. If there's a shakeup in the U.S. or in the world. Who is going to be the next ruling class? The ruling class always began, as Nietzsche said, as the barbarian class or the warrior class. Call it whatever you want. But right now, you know, the media is controlled by, you know, the art class or whatever you want to call them. But if they keep pushing people and there's some kind of, you know, civil war in different countries, who is going to win that? The warriors are, right? The warriors are going to win. And that's going to be the ruling aristocracy. It's always been that way. Eventually, a society becomes decadent and it decays. And then the warrior class falls away through, again, shaming a social status. And that's why everything I talk about is connected. 
your masculinity is shamed. Shame is social status. So to w the way that they lower your social, social status is they say, well, Mike's a caveman. Look at the fucking caveman. Well, that's the social status hierarchies of who? You know, uh, Matt Iglesias, who got fucking beat up by some street thugs, right? There was a kid, um, and I'm smiling because I don't feel bad for these people. I'm uh, probably, probably happy for it. And there was another kid. Um, I don't know his name. But he was one of those little... On Twitter, there's a guy, D-Ray. D-Ray. D-Ray starts riots and shit. D-Ray. You know, he's one of those little white kids. No, D-Ray. You know, recognize me, D-Ray. I'm, so, I'm a good little boy. I'm a good little boy. Yeah, I'm a good little boy. I hate white people, too, you know? White people are so evil. They're just out killing everybody, you know? Well, what happened to this kid? Fucking stabbed on a train by a thug. Am I happy? Yeah, I am. I am. That's the world he created. That's the world he wanted. Well, that's the world he got. You're sucking up to people who think it's good to go shoot cops, right? Who actually buy into the media narratives that George Zimmerman was really a killer when the evidence shows clearly that's not what happened. Well, you're, you're, you're telling me that that is the world you want to live in, where thugs can go around and brutalize people can rob people, can play the knockout game on people, and if the police defend themselves, well, the police get shot or they go to prison. If I defend myself, I'm a hate criminal, right? Could you imagine three black kids if they came at me on the street and attacked me? I'd, if I beat them up, I'd be, hate, I'd be hate criminal. They say, oh yeah, Mike wrote a mean tweet one time and this is racial animus. That's the world he wants. He wants to endanger my life and endanger your life. He got stabbed. He's fucking dead. Good. And I, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Good. That's the world he wanted. That's the world he got. But isn't the world I want. I sure as fuck am not going to be stabbed on the DC Metro. Because I'm a fucking man. If you want to surrender your masculinity and you want to be a fucking supplicating pussy, fine. Consequences. Next one, take a martial art. It's all kind of tied together, right? You got to know how to fucking handle yourself. You know, you got to have some street smarts. You got to know like that kid who, eh, you know, I, I fucking hate being white. I got the white guilt, man. Uh, I hate I hate myself, you know, because I'm a good little boy. I'm a good little boy. Hate, hate whitey, hate whitey. Well, that little white kid had no street smarts, had no f mental fortitude, had no muscle, no martial arts training. If I'm on a fucking, I, I almost got mugged, actually. I almost got stabbed by two, uh, two guys I was on the bus in the mission in San Francisco and I was riding and I looked at the stop and I saw there were two guys and they looked at each other and kind of nodded and they looked at me right as I got off they got off and I knew right away I was about to be in a fight for my life so what happened street smarts I just stopped turned around and looked at them so just looked at them right eye contact what they do they always right they're always startled because they think they're gonna get the jump on you right and I just yeah Nice little area. They went on their way. Another time, there was a, a vibrant youth was in the street. And there was kind of an overgirl by a girl over on the sidewalk. And he was in the road, just standing in the middle of the road. Now, if you're a vibrant youth standing in the middle of the road, because I'm not brainwashed, I know that you're not a good person. Why are you just standing in the middle of the road, right? There's no reason. So I was with my girl, and I said, watch this kid. He's going to try to say something to me. So what I always do is, that, you know, I'm not walking around like this because I'm fucking street aware. And I walk, and he looks at me, and then he starts to walk off the uh, road towards me. So right as I just look. I just make eye contact with him. And then, what does he do? He steps back. Because he make eye contact. Because they think they're the predators. Because they've been taught that me, I'm like Maddie Iglesias, you know. Oh, I'm just a good little white kid, you know. I'm so afraid, so afraid. Oh, yeah, I'm afraid, you know. That's what they've been taught. It had to happen again in San Francisco. Because I, I walk around a lot, so I encounter more sort of drama than most people. Because I walk around a lot, and when I live in San Francisco, I would walk to the Tenderloin, which is extremely dangerous. Open-air drug markets, thugs. And again, you walk and you see these kids that want to play sidewalk chicken, you know? So I just walk, make eye contact. I'm going to let you know. That if you're close enough and you think you're going to do drama on me, I see you. Let's make good, strong eye contact. And then we can decide how this is going to end. How is it going to end? And guess what happens? Nothing. Right? 
nothing because fucking cowards. But that's because I have the training, the martial training, the warrior training. I know how to handle myself. So if I'd been on that fucking that bus in D.C., I sure as if uh, the uh, train in D.C., that kid got stabbed. If I saw some fucking thug kid come over to harass me, I'm not going to look at my phone. It's probably how the kid goes, ah, and Twitter, you know, D-Ray. D-Ray, what should I say? I don't want them to think I'm racist. Right? So you, if I sense that I'm just fucking, I don't have a phone in my hand. And you think you're a thug, I'm just going to look right at you, look right at you. If you look like you're going to grab anything, I'm up like that. End of discussion. But again, mindset, I'm not brainwashed. And physical training, martial training, go to the gym. You have to have that. If you don't, you're just not a man. You're going to be stabbed in D.C. Probably gurgling blood. Probably people think that's morbid. But, I, you know, to be quite honest, I don't care. I really hate these fucking people. Because they want, from Washington, D.C., they want to ruin where I grew up, the Midwest. Because that's what they do. They dump them, they gentrify these rich neighborhoods. They send all the poor thugs away. And then they say, me and my people are the racist. Now, you just went in and you kicked all the thugs out of your neighborhood. And you want to push them into my neighborhood so that they can attack me and my kind. Well, fuck you. You know, fuck you. You got what you deserved. So if it bothers you or offends you that I don't really care, find another YouTube channel because that's the way we live. Uh, the next one is, you know, I think some of the better writers are, you know, read Aristotle, Nietzsche, Sherlock Holmes, Charles Bukowski, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Why? You want to get a broad subset of men and masculine knowledge. And they're all a certain part of masculinity. So Charles Bukowski is kind of a degenerate, but there's that degenerate nature to us. But you realize when you read his stuff, he never, he never found any kind of calm, quiet self-possession. Because as you get older, you can't live the same way you get younger. You know, if you're a 70-year-old man, unless you're Picasso, you know, you're either paying for women, but they don't love you. You're just, you're not, the game is different. So as you get older as a man, you have to focus more on wisdom. You know, like Sherlock Holmes, which is, might seem kind of out of left field, but if you view everything you learn as being part of a mental model about understanding the world, but then as you get older, it's just more experiences to draw on. And because you're more intellectual, it's the life of the mind. That's how you enjoy the ride as a man and how you appreciate every aspect of masculinity. And then the, the next one is, last one, reflect every day. You got to integrate what happened that day during the mental model. Turn off the TV, turn off the phones, turn off the wife, turn off the kids, and just think. What happened today? What did I learn? How am I expanding my knowledge and understanding the world? If you do that stuff 10, 10 ways, you will become more of a man. You'll understand what it means to be a man. You'll have that quiet, calm, coolness, that self-possession that only comes from hard-fought experience. You have to earn it. Take charge. Do it. Go to Danger and Play. I'll have more there on the website. I'll write this out, and you can find the list. Talk to you guys soon. Maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow.